Welcome to Laptop Radio. Today's topic is what is good governance in DeFi? And I have with me my friend Ingamore Ramirez. He is a writer and a Taoist. Hello, Ingamore. Where are you? Thanks for having me on, Michelle. I'm currently in Berlin, Germany. Oh uh, been sort of rom- like nomadic for the past couple months. I'm kind of digging it. How do you um, fly around? I mean, I thought we couldn't fly. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, just do some research and like there's there's certain countries that are like more lenient than others. Mm-hmm. And nice. yeah, so just like the pandemic has affected everyone and I think has caused a lot of like lifestyle changes for people. Like I didn't I didn't really consider being nomadic until until it became like super super boring and depressing to be like in New York in an apartment afraid to go outside and paying a lot of rent to be inside a box yeah months on end. So my my lease was just conveniently like ending like in the beginning of the, the beginning of the summer and just decided to not extend it. So I've wow. been yeah, just been sort of like a crypto vagabond since that's beautiful (laughs) wait wait you're in the west coast though california exactly yep i I hear things out there yes we have the pandemic we're growing now i mean at first we're controlling our numbers but the numbers have been going up and i think we're eight million now besides the pandemic we also have riots we have earthquakes and then Mm. we also have fires Right. So it's, it, um, it could yeah. be anything. <laughs> yeah. It just, it sounds, yeah, kind no, of apoc- apocalyptic out there. Yeah. But, but if, I, you're, I hope you're well. if you're used to startups, you, you kind of get used to all kinds of changes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <I> mean, <laughs> That's a good way to put it. It sounds really bad, but mm-hmm. you get, you get used to anything happening, any changes. So I've had my days of DDoS attacks <laughs> where, you know, right. I have to really go into computers and fix it for a whole right. day and the pandemic and everything else is kind of like the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's, it sounds terrible, but it's, it's like the world is getting DDoS attacked. Yeah. <laughs> In a more <laughs> physical way, I guess. I had yeah. people who tried to steal the site and all kinds of things happening. So I think dealing with physical reality is almost the same as dealing with digital reality in a different mm. way. It's just really how you handle it, right? So, so um, totally. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, speaking of the pandemic and like lifestyle changes, I had some extra time to just explore interests and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, I spent a period like making music, awesome. reading books and stuff. And also like, I don't know if you had things in the back of your head where you were like, oh man, if I had more time, I would totally just like learn about this. Like yeah. this thing that I'm curious about. So like for me, that thing was, was DeFi. It's something that I've heard a lot about as like, a, like this trend. Yeah. This like, I don't know if it was a fad or whatever. And I just told myself, I'm going to like learn about this stuff because, you know, why the heck not? That's and awesome. uh, yeah, I, I have friends building like all the time in that space. And uh, what I did was I just reached out and said, hey, can I like write stuff about what you're building? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, actually, we need that. We need just content and explainers just explaining how to use the stuff that we're building. And, and first one was a DAO launcher that, mm-hmm. that they built for, for DAO stack. And DAO stack is like a, like a governance application for, for DAOs. And yep. what, one, of the, one of the things that DAOs use to, to govern themselves. And they made like an instant DAO maker. Yeah, so it's, like it's, with it's a few, pretty cool. Yeah, so with a few clicks, you can just, you can have your own decentralized auto- autonomous organization where you have other other people involved and you have a treasury address and you can make proposals and and unlock funds for different initiatives that person has and then there you go you got your own little micro organization that is decentralized and i just thought that was really neat so i just wrote like how to how to do that how to make your own DAO. awesome and you know like the, i explained it as simple as possible to the point that like if you can make an ether wallet you can make a DAO. 
Yeah. So, so in that process, I learned about DAOs and, and how to use these applications and it was fun. And then it just like leads off other things to like learn and write about. And it became like a skill that I was developing. And with that, would often like give feedback on, on the products that I write about. So, mm-hmm. so like most of the, like a lot of the time they would, they would like, they would make certain improvements on the product just based on the process of me writing about it and trying to use it and trying to explain how to use it. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think like a lot more goes to it than, than just writing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I understand. I, I was, I was once a journalist in high school and college and cool. yeah, I, I, I'm trying to really, I've been writing a lot for governance research, but I was always trying to find my voice, but I did a lot of creative writing, more of not just journalism, but that voice in creative writing when I was a child, I used to do a lot of poetry hmm. and a lot of creative writing, but I think hmm. in law school I was in the tech review. <laughs> I did some technical writing for different companies like Cisco, Casal, and then writing a lot of more legal writing, like playbooks, policies. <laughs> I think, but I'm still like trying to find my voice, more the creative writing part and not more the business writing part because, right, right. because I feel like it's all buried with all these professional writing. <laughs> what is Michelle like when she was writing mm-hmm. about her experiences? How does she see the world? And I think both style writing are, are, are really, really important and interesting. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah, I've just been doing a lot of creativity, as you know, like to share, just staying at home and that's all I do. But like last year when I was traveling a lot, I didn't get a chance to do a a lot of things I wanted to do like I took some coding class I had like a private tutor and I took PHP at Stanford but I wanted to be as good as one of my friend who is really good mm. so mm. I actually wanted to take a formal class on it and I didn't well, get why PHP it. in particular just random uh, learning C and then Java from one of my private tutor for a while and then I took PHP at Stanford just to have different skill set that complement it because I was doing a lot of HTML like I was a web developer mm-hmm. in college mm-hmm. I was doing chatbots and other kind of coding this year I just been focused a lot on creative coding I would I would be on the airport trying to do augmented reality <laughs> and because that's, cool. that would be the only time I have but now that I have all the time in the world I'm doing a lot of bit bashing because I hate terminal and mm-hmm. And this is really, really simple stuff. And that was just like, okay, since I hate it, I must learn it. So I'm like actually learning to love it, even though Bash is a little bit more high maintenance because it's very particular about certain symbols. So like the parentheses is different from the brackets and mm. it's different from the curly brackets. And But I kind of I kind of really like, like the exploration of it, kind of like what you're doing with DAOs. And right. What is your background? My background is sort of mostly like digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Like that was before blockchain, I guess. And before that, I was at a law firm, like a chapter 11 based like law firm. Oh, fun. And yeah, it was, it was all right. And then I like, kind of learned digital marketing because I, I really didn't want to, I feel like I reached my ceiling in that place and just didn't yeah. want to spend like years just to get to the next level and, you know, look as unhappy and unfit as the guys <laughs> at that level. Yeah, um, I know. So I was like, I'm gonna learn something else. And then, you know, learn digital marketing, how to like compose digital marketing campaigns for like small businesses and stuff and learn about Bitcoin and ICOs from a potential client. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, that just got me really curious and it just took a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, persistence and exploration. And I think I was really lucky to be in New York City because they, or at that time, they had meetups like every day, like yeah. multiple meetups a day. Yeah, so it's it was normal. Yeah. It, yeah, so like it was easy to just go there and learn about the industry from people. I find curiosity to be like rewarding you know, like yeah. in any situation. You know, when you're trying to get somewhere, like the, the more curious the, you are and the way the more curiously you act, the the better. You know, and yeah. and I think you expressed that too. And when you said that, you know, learn you, you learned to love the things that you just formerly hated. Yeah. I think there's like this quote from Mike Tyson, like he was asked what is discipline and he said, yeah, do, do what you hate, but do it like you love it. Yeah, 
I mean, like sometimes yeah. for me, you might hate things because you don't know it. I always see terminal. Like I think people are just laughing at me because like I, at one point when I was at Cisco, I need to encrypt a website and none of the developers knew how to do it. Um, I sent an email out and I decided to just sit down, learn it myself and do it on my own. And I did, like I have a Unix manual. <laughs> And mm -hmm. I found out what the server was, the open source server that we're using were, and then I just coded it all by myself. That was fine and it, it was good, right? So I had that. And then I also took DOS when I was in grade school. So, but every time I see that terminal window in Apple, I just hated it. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like ping this, ping that. It's just a little weird because like, if I know and could figure out for my PHP class, I will really you know, did it within three hours at a friend's house. <laughs> I mean, the final. If I could learn something like that fast, but I hate terminal, like something is wrong with that, right? So then I was just like, okay, I need to learn whatever terminal is, <laughs> which is bad scripting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, just like, just looking at it and just coding every, you know, like three days a week was really helpful. <laughs> and just yeah. even little things like an export line or <laughs> something that really yeah. helped. I think I'm kind of with that attitude. I think there's there's a certain things that I want to unlearn, especially concepts about money, because I have a lot of money books at home and taking risk, right? Because I think we're mm. taught not to take risk. Like what you're doing, oh, I'm gonna like do something completely new. Let me learn marketing. Oh yeah, let me learn about governance or DAO. <laughs> what is that, right? And right, being, right. being able to understand it and be immersed into it super quickly. It's kind of cool. Yeah, like you learn really fast. I yeah. think in this industry, everything moves so, so fast. And, and I think go, like governance just encompasses it's so much. Like I think a very small percentage of it is is like actually done on chain. Mm -hmm. And with something like having a DAO on, on DAO stack or, or 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 anything that involves like proposals, yep, that are executed on chain. A lot of the governance or the or the discourse is like that's not on chain. So the only on the on chain part is that's like the final word. That's like the consensus part. But everything leading up to it is yeah. just like open communication and chat platforms and Discord or or Jitsi or like video calls. And so like you can have on chain governance, but like you need like you need like different personalities that that speak their minds and basically a community. Yeah. To like to discuss all sides of, of issues and, and ideas. And it's up to them. It's up to like the quality of that determines the quality of like whatever gets actioned on yeah. on chain. So, yeah, and then it, it's also dependent on execution of the people who are responsible as well, right? I mean you can you can have good governance. You could, you know, basically make decisions, but if no one is really executing it doesn't do anything for you. Like what is governance in, in that sense, right? You know, especially for a, a DeFi project, what is DeFi to start with? <laughs> <laughs> I guess decentralized finance, that's what it stands for. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's, it's, it's the, the use of financial products that, that do not custodialize your money. Mm -hmm. Meaning like your money is still yours and you get to make more money off of it in a way that is decentralized and permissionless. Mm -hmm. I guess that I guess that's what a lot of DeFi products shoot for. I don't know that they all accomplish all those bullet points, mm -hmm. but that is sort of the like that is the world that they're in. Awesome. And so. I see a lot of governance coins or a growing amount of governance governance right. coins now. And and it's actually the market cap is pretty huge, especially using Ethereum coin. Can you like talk a little bit sure. about what the governance coins are for? I mean, why do cryptocurrency even need governance? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah it's a, I, I can see it's already giving me a headache and for good reason. So like dozens and dozens of quote unquote governance tokens launched last summer because that was the cool thing to do. I guess the, the initial point of these governance tokens was the users, AKA the liquidity providers, the people using the products, they earn these governance tokens and these governance tokens give them rights, voting rights over uh, proposals that can amend the, the system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the criticism about it is that I can just go buy all these governance 
like majority of these governance tokens and swing a vote. Mm -hmm. It would be really costly to do in many cases, so it's not that not that practical or or easy to do. But like that is that is sort of a flaw where like the ones with the big money and often like the VCs are the ones who hear about these projects and yeah. those are like the early liquidity providers. Those are the ones that end up with most of the power. Uniswap launched a, a governance token recently and it was airdropped to every user of the of Uniswap product. Mm -hmm. And that was really awesome because it was just like a free stimulus check and everyone's mm -hmm. Ether wallet, you know, like I had five wallets that I've used Uniswap with, so I <laughs> free airdrops from 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 Uniswap, and it was really exciting because it came out of nowhere, unannounced. And looking deeper into the into the the parameters of the governance platform, you would need you would need like ten or twenty million dollars worth of their token in order to to propose a, a an idea. Mm -hmm. that can like Im potentially improve Uniswap. So like why such a high barrier to just present an idea? Like I, I just think that is really prohibitive to people and only, only grants power to like the very few people with really deep networks or really deep pockets. Mm -hmm. And that kind of governance doesn't really foster good ideas or a community. It seems to be very much about how much money do you got? And yeah. depending on that, maybe you can be a part of this system. You know? Sometimes we need to be aware of the paradoxes it, the technology creates because like if you don't do that, if you let technology govern, then it could exclude. Versus I think if you come and design a concept from scratch and think about how to use technology to to empower or to allow that concept to execute or be implemented then i think it's a lot better right because if you required a lot of money to vote then it really eliminates the voice and some of the people who are excluded could have really good ideas for the organization and yeah, totally. that's one thing that I would like to actually see, you know, just just new ways of defining voting and what that means. Right. I think that um, I think a good DAO should welcome like cool ideas. I think a good DAO should open up the floor to anybody who really wants to speak, who wants to get an idea out there mm -hmm. and propose something. So there are governance platforms out there, such as, you know, DAO stack. I know you were like looking into that. Yeah, we um, spoke with DAO stack. Yep. Awesome. So like DAO stack, for example, it lets anybody from outside of the DAO propose something to the DAO. It's up to the DAO, whether it passes or fails, but I, I really like the idea of anyone. It's very like open source and, and, you know, decentralized and, and from, from like a, like a power standpoint where like anyone can come in and just suggest something. Mm -hmm. And if, and if like the DAO digs it, like, why not, why not ratify it? You mm -hmm. know, I really like, like openness and transparency mm -hmm. in DAO governance. And I just think that that's, that's kind of the, what the direction that we should go. Like we're a very crypto, it's very like remote culture. Everyone's distributed. I think, I think good ideas are distributed from people within the DAO, people like not in the DAO. Yeah. And you know, like the the more open you are, like the more ideas you can absorb and like implement. So yeah. what are some of the companies that ha that are using a good DAO system? Or, you know, that that is either a decentralized autonomous organization right now, running with with that governing the organization. Or is a private organization using DAOs for their governance? I like the best examples are probably not like crazy popular, but there's the, the DX DAO, mm -hmm. which is a DAO of dozens and dozens of active members, but mm -hmm. as many as uh, 400 ETH addresses that have voting power. So these are people who have like daily calls, discussing products, discussing business development, discussing just general dev calls, weekly updates. There's so much going on. There's so many different initiatives going on at once. And there's multiple DeFi applications. 
like from ex decentralized exchanges, prediction markets, like layer two payments. <laughs> and like, it's, it's so cool. There's so many people working on different stuff and it's chaotic, but it's also like a lot of things are getting shipped and get, getting yeah. done and like released. So, like so me, in the span of months, you know? Yeah, let me clarify something. So the DAO members, are they also employees or just everything is just open source and people are just contributing and they're also members of the DAO? Like, yeah. is that a fair question? Because like question. in a normal corporation, you have say the CEO, the CFO and the COO or the CMO. And then you have different, you have teams, you have the developers who make the product, you have the marketing team, blah, blah, blah. And they basically decide on the direction of the company. So sometimes the chief marketing officer would be responsible for one thing and everything else is done by other staff. So with the, with DAOs and, and what you just spoke about, DX DAO, how do they organize that? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a really good, really good question. There's still, there's still leadership. Mm -hmm. within within DAOs, there aren't really titles. And I guess that's that's like a huge distinction. There's people who were involved early on and contributed and and put a lot of of their time and effort and resources up front and like shaped how the DAO like became today. Mm -hmm. And they're not they're not C you know, they don't take the title of CEO. They don't have any necessarily extra privileges over other people like mm -hmm. in an executive sense they might have a good amount more like voting power than maybe a new person who came on last week yeah or more no. reputation <laughs> yeah yeah basically and this DAO in particular did a continuous token offering and they did have a, have a token and that's how a lot of the funding came in so mm -hmm. once that happened people proposed positions and responsibilities that they would fulfill i will do this this and this I'm this guy, this is my experience, this is what I've done so far in this DAO, and I'm requesting this much money to handle all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, just put that out there. And then, you know, one by one, people would have like short-term engagements of like one month, two months in, in those windows. So I think the cool thing about that is like, if you're only engaging in like one or two month periods, like you're always having to prove yourself and track mm -hmm. what you're doing so that when you propose again, they'll see like, oh, okay, this guy actually fulfilled such and such and such the way he proposed. And let's do another one or two months. So it's very, everyone kind of keeps tabs on everyone and everyone is making sure that they're doing what they say because what they propose is on chain and it's there for everyone to see. And when it comes time for the next half of payment, they'll have to make another proposal for that and depending on like what they did, the DAO takes into consideration whether they, you know, deserve like the second half of the payment in their engagement proposal. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, like, they've been pretty good about it. Like they've everyone who's who's been working full time has not slacked at all just because of the way the system is is built. But I see I see a lot of a lot of organizations that start off as companies with like legal structure and executive mm -hmm. team. They try to decentralize after mm -hmm. and it always, it always like stays centralized mm -hmm. because of like how it started. And that is a challenge, but I think it is a great thing to aspire to if you're a company building a, a decentralized product, like mm -hmm. you have to, you have to build a community that cares enough about the project and is active and incentivized enough to maintain it. Like if you were to take your hands off of it and I think that is like a real challenge. Like building a community is like a really important thing if you're trying to decentralize. I, I feel like a lot of people don't really understand what community building is. Like not just with governance and DeFi, but also with issuing tokens. When you build a startup, you know, a lot of people focus on the product. They don't focus on the marketing or the, or the market, right? Because it's part of market fit. That is just really never a priority sometimes. And I'm not surprised when someone tells me that they fell because they don't have a market. And with token startups or blockchain startups, which requires network effects and a lot of notes and really, really highly, highly specialized skill set. And they don't really understand community. And that 
literally becomes almost a failure that I don't want to I don't want to say but because you don't have community and you don't really even try to build it like what does community mean is it really marketing like I feel like community is different from marketing I'll try I guess a, a strong community like they align with certain brands mm-hmm. and they are properly incentivized to participate mm-hmm. in a product and are incentivized to extend that product to more users. It might be those two things. I'm, sh- I'm sure it's a third thing, but... What is incentivization then? Yeah, incentivization, like I, I guess, are just rewards for participating, so... What are the rewards in the token sense? In more of like the normal startup sense, you know, you, you, can, you can build communities and... You know, people love the mission. It could, the mission just could be enough or people just love the UX or other people that is in the group. So I would say I'm in some kind of community. I'm like, I'm in different communities because of what I do. Say I'm in the Stanford radio community because that's what, mm-hmm. that's what we do. And I listen to other people's show and I love going to the radio station and check out music. And that's always very inspiring to me. And learning from other people, like we had a call and I was learning about Seattle and you know the, the music museum there. I love that. But in, hmm. in terms of the incentivization part with blockchain projects and DeFi projects, does incentivization mean a certain thing? Yeah, it's often gonna mean, is this profitable? And often like participation means, it means putting your liquidity into the product. So for example, something like, something like Curve Finance that is, that's a lot of people's favorite liquidity, mining, yield farming platform. You're incentivized to put your your stable coins on there because mm-hmm. they reward you in tokens for just leaving it on there for a period of time. So like that counts as incentivization. And I think part of the Curve brand, like they have a really cool interface. It's very mm-hmm. like old school Macintosh. Like mm-hmm. I really like that about about the brand. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. About that. yeah. It's got a cool style. Yeah, it style. pays you to, to park your, your money there. And and that's enough for, for me to like teach people about it. Mm-hmm. It's like I feel like it's one of the safer DeFi products that's been audited multiple times. So often I'll you know I'll teach people how to use it. And it, Yep. So Ingemar, I, I'm, I'm like becoming a glossary nerd in the last couple of weeks. So I did write a simple glossary for DeFi and blockchain. So for DeFi though, let's define some of the terms. Sure, <laughs> that sure. You let's just try. mentioned. Okay, let's try. What is yielding? Okay, yielding is basically like earning a, an interest income for, mm-hmm. for parking your liquidity on a DeFi product. Okay. And what do you mean by liquidity? Liquidity mean like money, ether, cryptocurrency, stable coins, basically that. Okay. And then what is farming? <laughs> <laughs> I guess farming is just kind of a spin on it because I guess like when you farm, you plant crops and they grow. Yeah. And with farming. this, like it's very passive. It's passive work on the back end, but like up, up front, you're, you know, I'm, I'm depositing, transacting, like activating MetaMask. You know, accepting cool done and then after that like i'm just farming and like collecting from the crops that oh so it's like the results of your labor yeah that that sort of thing so and that's become quite a successful meme in the past few months yeah i I, i've I've saw a lot of these terms it's it's pretty cool so is there anything is there any other terms that i've forgotten to ask you yield farming liquidity mining I think there's a third one. Because I said sometimes when you're in the space, it's like you just see them all the time, but you can find a yeah. glossary on Medium. <laughs> staking? You could say staking. Yeah, staking is when you put your money. In, in a way, but that's an older that's an older, that's an older term. term. One of the ideas that I've just been playing with is, or just a question I've been asking myself, is that like, is, is DeFi possible for, for Bitcoin and how... Like, how can we bring DeFi for, for Bitcoin? Yeah. Because it is like, it is the first like digital money, decentralized money. Yeah. And it, do, it doesn't really like talk to other blockchains. So like we have this awesome decentralized money 
but we can't interact with it in a decentralized way. And I feel like that's so ironic and paradoxical. And like, I feel like it's so obvious, like we need to have yeah. that in place. Yeah, it's like, it's like supposed to be peer to peer, but it's not peer to peer or interoperable yet. Right. Yeah. It, even in the sense of, of like using it, like trading with it and lending with it, 99% of those things, you can't do that in a decentralized way. And I yeah. think that like Ethereum is an awesome sandbox where like all the ex experiments are happening. It's kind of like a mad science lab for, <laughs> for like DeFi where you're, you're like, you're seeing like a bunch of beakers and some things are boiling, some things are exploding, some things are turning beautiful colors. And you know, I, I think Bitcoin and Bitcoiners are kind of just watching and seeing like which ones are working. And, you know, I think it's a good time for, for Bitcoiners to start exploring DeFi, in my opinion, because it only makes sense for like decentralized money to have decentralized services. And like, I'm kind of biased because I, I think that Bitcoin is like the one true money out of all the cr cryptocurrencies. <laughs> I read it your is, article. It, yeah, it is. It is only like. It is, I think it's the only one that it's, it only wants to do that. Yeah. And I think it's the best fit to do that. But, you know, like, I think, I think Ethereum is like an awesome place to like build cool things with that is not necessarily like money based. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not like a maximal whatever. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. It, it's kind of interesting because payments, I think about Stellar, right? And mm -hmm. Bitcoin, I think about money. And then Ethereum, I think about smart contracts and other tools. So, yeah. but it, it's still, we're still not there yet and it's still early and regulation is still developing right now as well. So mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's an interesting cutting edge or leading edge area that, that we, we need to look at. And then even governance is new there. I think there's not a lot of governance coins or even governance structure models or governance layer mm. in different projects that are fully developed yet. So I think everything is still a little bit fresh. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree that like on-chain governance really, really muddy, especially if you're a group of more than like 20 people. Mm -hmm. But I think that it is more than functional at, at the small scale. Mm -hmm. I'm in a few DAOs, like as you probably guess and some of them are, are just like about a dozen active people and it's so it's very like really transparent and chill and mm -hmm. like things get done and it's on chain and there are no secrets and everything is like okay just give us an example fair. of one of the gal that you've created your favorite one yeah that sure you have created. <laughs> well like what one of my favorites is called dior shout out to dior and it's mostly a developer shop mm -hmm. and so like they don't have their own like token or nothing like that mm -hmm. their business model is like build DeFi product products mm -hmm. for you know it's like a it's like a dev shop yep in, in the traditional world and it's a handful of guys and they, and they communicate like very very well when it comes to delegating responsibilities like oh, okay who wants this project okay you 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 guys are a pod you're going to work on this this, these are the funds you discuss among, amongst yourselves, how much work you're taking on. And then like, yeah, there's like, they're really good about matching like workloads with compensation and it's all transparent and it's all like, it's all fair, mm -hmm. like in terms of like the voting power and there's proper discourse and they, they like, they're really, really efficient that way. Mm -hmm. And like, that's kind of why on chain DAOs were created so that you can kind of scale, you know, as you grow and as you, and as like more money comes in and more people come in, more mm -hmm. responsibilities, it, they're able to scale really, really well. They're actually the first ever like legal limited liability company. That's also a DAO. So they're oh, able awesome. to take on, yeah, like engagements with other like LLCs. Where are they incorporated in? I believe Virginia. Oh, wow. Awesome. So they, yeah. they actually have a Virginia LLC that is yeah. with a DAO. Yeah. 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 Wow. And it's all, all, yeah, it's, they're like actually the first to like ever do it. And since then they've, they're probably like the highest revenue DAO that like didn't raise a token. 
it's pretty phenomenal what they what, what, what do they it. use for voting then if I mean, so they basically yeah. use a nothing they basically they use uh they use dow stack uh -huh. and they have a treasury and they all have voting power and, mm -hmm. and most of the voting is in, invo involves compensation among the, the builders and uh, wait 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 so people. they actually use money mm -hmm. wow that's right awesome. yeah yeah so like when 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 there's like a client engagement they do a proposal, they write the contract, and the client signs, and they send the stable coins or the ether to the address. Yep. And then each of the, the members, they propose, all right, I'm doing this, requesting payment for this, I'm handling this, 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 here's links to this. And then everyone votes, and then they get it, and it's it's really, really efficient. You know? That's awesome. There's no boss, there's no CEO or nothing like that. It's and it's really, really open, and they're always like looking for more people to join. And yeah, and they I mean, have really and then cool... they just pay taxes on their income. Right. Yeah, they do that. Actually. Really cool. The way for for like new builders to enter the DAO is they do like a like a little project, like a one day project. For example, I want to join as like a marketing business development guy, so I'll write an article about the org and put it on Hacker Noon, and this is my little project, mm -hmm. and then. When they approve it, they give you like a hundred dollars in, in USDC or whatever, and then like you're in the DAO. Oh, and cool. it's like that for builders too. Like you do like you code a small project, submit it. it is what I got. Do you think it's cool? Yeah, we think it's cool. Here's your here's a hundred dollars, and you're in. And That's then awesome. You're you're pretty much on call for like any project that comes. They're like, hey, are you available for this? And That's how it's how it's been working. Yeah, so, it's almost like an open source system with yeah. open money. Um, and I really think, yeah, but I think it's the future. I think it's the future of how like working groups are going to be. I think in five to 10 years, mm -hmm. I think it will have that dynamic where it's very merit based. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just how it should be. Yeah, it's kind of nice to be paid when you are actually working and doing something. And yeah, sure. it is also in, you know, more in a decentralized kind of organization way that is also legally compliant. I mean, that's like really ideal. Yeah, it kind of hits all the, all the marks. <laughs> <laughs> right. That is awesome. Right. Yeah, and totally. um, so you seem to be really excited right now. What are some of the stuff that you're doing? So you're writing now and mm. really awesome articles. Where can people read your work? Because like, I, I feel like I always need to ask a writer that question okay. because when you spend a lot of brain power in writing a piece, it's always nice for someone to read it. <laughs> yeah, um, that, would be, that would be ideal. Where can people find your work? Sure. I'm on medium.com slash at Ingemar. I'm also on Twitter. I always post my stuff on twitter.com slash Ingalandia. I-N-G-A-L-A-N-D-I-A. -A -A. So I always post new new content pieces on there because I want them to be read and I love the attention. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different because you're, you're a writer, you want people to read your stuff just because you spent so much time and effort in it. I mean, I understand. Yeah. I understand. It, it's well, a, yeah. a lot of work that comes with writing because you have to do the research and it's almost right. like doing interviewing it's a, lot of hard, it's a lot of hard work that goes into it. So like, yeah, and I know that I can benefit like people. It, but there is, yeah. But I really appreciate you having, having me on. Of course. And then is there anything else that you want to share that I have not asked you? I mean, I think I've asked you a lot, a lot mm. of questions, but in a, in a different kind of way, like where I don't say, hey, here's a question for you. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, I mean, like, uh, you know, shout out to all my friends. You know who you are. Thanks hey. for listening. At this point. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michelle. And then the the entire community is awesome. I met uh, Ingmar in, in New York when you're, I think what we're eating. Yeah, at a at a conference. So it, you know, I love the community of, of blockchain. When I was first doing like more of building companies from scratch, I was very focused on, you know, I'll go to a conference, I'll just meet one or two people and, and that's okay for me. And then like the whole ethos of decentralization is about community. And so when when it's about communities, it's a little bit different because then everyone seems to have something to add and everyone's unique 
like I guess talents and stuff is really different and their knowledge base is really different as well because you just don't know everything you know even if you're leading an organization you don't know everything <laughs> so and and because it's really community based you kind of need all kinds of angles and points to work together in order to move forward and, and I think I think it's more entire ecosystem based because everyone needs to move up and move forward together and I think that's like one of the cool thing about governance because you really want the community to vote to propose ideas to participate it's okay if they don't but it's actually better if they do <laughs> my last question is what is one advice that you would like to share with the community with the I guess DeFi or blockchain community in, uh, in general? Any community, yeah. Sure. I guess let your curiosity grab you and, and just follow it. And don't worry about what will happen and what's in it for you. If you keep that open mindedness, like you're, you're, on a, you're actually like just maximizing what you can potentially get out of it. So, uh, you know, just let your interests guide you and don't worry about anything else. Awesome. Thank you, Ingemar. Thank you so much, Michelle. Bye-bye. Take care.